Uh, so IBM has the concept of regions, availability zones, single zone regions, MZRs, multi-zone regions, and benefits. Uh, and so this is from the, um, the study guide. So I would encourage you to go uh, read up on those as well, but uh, some of the benefits that you will get. Okay, so here is some of our data centers. Uh, and in this uh, link, we will open that and go look at some of the data centers and look at the, uh, so a zone is a geographic location such as uh, Dallas. Washington, D.C. would be a different zone. London would be another zone. Frankfurt, Tokyo, Sydney. These are zones. Uh, I'm sorry, regions. <laughs> regions. San Jose is another region. And so a region is a geographic location that has mul usually has multiple data centers. Uh, you can kind of think like a city metroplex. Um, now within a region, and let me see if I have here what the uh, definition here was. Yeah, it's a geographically uh, separate group of availability zones. So availability zone is a lot like a data center, kind of think of it like a um, like a data center or a, or a campus. Uh, the key point is it's a logical grouping of data centers physically isolated uh, from other uh, availability zones within a region. And so it's got independent power. So if the power, the electricity went out in one available avail availability zone, it would not impact the other availability zones. If the heating and air conditioning or the cooling went out in one availability zone, it would not impact the others. And it also has different networking. So if you have AT&T to connect your data center to the internet, if AT&T went down, then you would have a different availability zone that had a different network connection and thus you wouldn't have an outage. So that's availability zone. The region again, is uh, multiple availability zones uh, usually, uh, and it's a geographic region, a geographic area. So some of our data centers are in a single zone region, and some of our data centers are in a multi-zone region. So uh, three or more zones is what we call a MZR. Uh, now these data centers are usually 10 to 20 kilometers apart. So that you don't have, so you don't have, you know, a flood in, you know, one data center that brings down all of the other data centers. Uh, but they're still close enough that they have low latency. So under two milliseconds is generally the latency between the availability zones of an MZR. Uh, to put that into perspective. Within an availability zone, so think of a data center, generally you're about, you know, uh, 0.5 milliseconds. So under two or three, under two milliseconds is cross availability zone. Within an availability zone, it tends to be 0.5. These are very high speed networks between them um, so that you can, you know, have an active, active database within an MZR. That's a very common scenario, uh, web servers, things like that. Effectively, the latency is so low that you can treat the MZR as a virtual data center uh, and you can you know, run active active uh, clustering across those zones. Uh, that's what we have here. Uh, these are the different choices. Uh, you can see data centers, you can see uh, um, where they're located. You can see San Jose. These are the different data centers. And if you see three of these like this together, this is an, this is an MZR. Uh, San Jose is also an MZR. Seattle, as an example, is not an MZR, a uh, multi-zone region. There's only one data center. So that would be a single zone region. Right. And by default, if you run your service, uh, our services in a single zone, non-HA fashion, our SLA is 99.9. .9. If you run 
our services, such as Kubernetes, such as the Watson services, those are automatically uh, provisioned in an MZR. You can get VMware in an MZR, which means it's deployed to three data centers and clustered across. Then our SLA is four nines. Uh, if you want five nines, it, it, you can get that as well. Five. Okay. So one of the uh, nice things about three data centers is if, you're, if your service is three nines, so 99.9% .9 and you make three copies of it, now your, your um, availability percentage now goes to five nines, 99.999, which is about five minutes of downtime per year versus you know, a, a day or so. Uh, so that's one of the other benefits of having a three, a three zones. One other nice thing about having three is reduction of hardware. Let me see if I can draw on this uh, screen. Uh, or actually, I can read just text. So if I had an application that needs six cores, as an example, let me go here and say that I need six cores and I need it to be highly available. So I say that's six. Okay. Now, if I want to make that highly available, I would need another six. So now I have that six cores in two data centers, i.e. I have 12 cores, right? I have 12 cores to run that application using just a dual data center. But if I were to spread that across my three availability zones, then I can actually go with three, right? So now I take this three, and then I have another three down here, and then I have another three down here, of course, right? My app, say it's a database, and it runs across all three of these data centers or availability zones. Now I have nine total cores versus 12 total cores over here in this dual data center approach, right? This is 12 cores. This is nine cores. And I can take this whole avail availability zone down, do maintenance on it, then push out my update to this, uh, to this new availability zone, new compute, and then start staggering out the other data centers. So then I would push out to this other data center once this one is updated. So I get 50% less hardware and higher levels of availability. So that's one of the benefits of having these three zones. This MZR is I get reduced hardware and increased availability. And because the latency is so low between these, uh, I can run active active uh, setups and what you see this pop here is a point of presence so a point of presence is a connection to uh, uh, networking and so each of these availability zones are connected redundantly to at least two pops so that and you can think of this as like at&t and this is maybe verizon so if verizon's network goes down then the network would be routed to the at&t link and so this gives me redundancy across my availability zones or, um, so that I don't have an outage. And this is how we can give you guarantee four nines of availability. Okay, so those are the choices. Uh, data centers you see here, you see these are MZRs. Uh, the other uh, benefit of an MZR is consistency. Whatever is in one MZR will be in the other uh, MZRs. So you can expect a similar kind of uh, uh, capability and service. Okay, so single zone, MZRs, uh, MZRs, yeah, any GA service uh, in an MZR will be in all other MZRs in 90 days. It's going to have a similar uh, experience. Uh, and as I uh, mentioned here, that's from the docs, but if you were to go to the public cloud, let me just show you the uh, things that are in MZRs uh, quickly. In the catalog, if I go, say, provision, uh, let's say, um, uh, let's choose a service here, let's do OpenShift. 
uh, search open shift and you'll see whenever I go to provision open shift. So this would be standing up my own private cloud as an example, because this is a software defined cloud, right? And I can choose where I want to run it. I can say it's in a multi-zone region, right? Let's say in Dallas and you see it chooses three data centers, right? So that would give me that, that uh, MZR approach. And I can say, I only want three worker nodes. And then I can provision across those data centers. Now I could choose a single zone and then I would just choose which data center I want to run on, right? Like Dallas three, right? Now the problem is if that data center goes down, then I would have, have an outage. If I run it in an MZR, then it's spread across three different data centers with independent power, independent networking, independent cooling. And so now I can update, um, I can take one of the worker nodes off, I can take, uh, upgrade the hardware, and then the other two data centers would keep my, um, my application going. Now with OpenShift, these are all active active. So these servers are not passively sitting there in a backup mode. They are actively uh, contributing and doing work unless, you know, you have an outage. And then, uh, then in this case, IBM manages it. So we would spin up a new worker for you uh, as part of the service. Uh, but so that's part of the benefit of uh, the active active. You can do that if you go to the Watson services. These by default run in an MZR. So when you provision a service, it's already running uh, on Kubernetes across three data centers so that we can guarantee high levels of availability uh, for that service. Okay, so we did that, MZR, coverage, data centers, MZRs. Okay, 